use the backboard. Yeah, and he's, he will use the backboard, so this is an old fashioned <laughs> math talk without slides. No, it's not a math talk, so that's why I want to be scared. I will look at the formula I need. Well, I have some pictures. So <laughs> well, thanks a lot uh, for inviting me to this beautiful place, and I really enjoyed all the conference. And uh, okay, my phone. Uh, I don't know if Jason insists oh, of no, me no, keeping the. Oh, Okay, so the purpose of the talk will be to present what is not a paper program, it is trying to. I would say how a mathematician tries to understand uh, uh, mathematics and uh, one way is to talk to Rolando and uh, do it very often and uh, very grateful for the explanation he gives me. Uh, the other way, I don't know how successful, is to try to apply a theory uh, to the fact that in a sense, if you have some familiarity with team theory and you read just the beginning of the, the original people of Christ and these things, you, you, you really feel that is really speaking of the idea of you see people are cooperative with this. So what would be the general idea? Well we would have a space of states of the of world, state of affairs, things like that. <coughs> then you have messages, you know, this is what we say, our language, and then you have actions that people take. So the set of the world sometimes are not important, sometimes they are. So the idea is what? It is, well, each of us has some information about the world. Our information don't necessarily overlap. There are things that somebody knows and somebody else doesn't know. So a function of language is to communicate information to the other one. Well, I said sometimes state of the world are not necessarily in order to feed the need of language. Because uh, what we want to communicate is not the state of the world, really, but is what we are going to do. So, I mean, this is yeah, that you say, if you think, uh, uh, you see, not all propositions are declaratives. We can say, I promise that tomorrow we will do what So, in this case, it doesn't depend what, I mean, if I say it in this way, you say, promise unconditionally that tomorrow we do A, it does not depend on the state of the world. Okay. And then, Much better, thanks. <laughs> yeah, example of communication. <laughs> and this idea is what I wanted to say, that is, and then we assume, to begin with, that the interest of uh, the players coincide. As in this case, you see, it, it was your, it was your interest to look at the blackboard, it was my interest to, that you see, and that somebody realized that it was a good idea to turn the light on. So everybody agreed that turning the light on was a good and maybe do it even more. Okay. I don't know. Did I see two? So, like, 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 Well, at least to a large extent. It's not that we really all have the same interest, but to some extent we do have it. I, I will tell you um, in a moment some examples. Okay, so to analyze this situation, as I said, uh, it seems that a good idea is to use games. So for instance, let, let's see immediately what cooperative is formalized in the case of game. Well, we can have a very simple example. We have to decide where to go to dinner tonight, Roland and me, or whatever, because we are two players. And there is a very good restaurant, like the one that Roland recommended to me yesterday. We call it A. And there is a restaurant that is OK, B. Mm -hmm. But really, the important point is that I want to have dinner with uh, Roland. So if we both go to restaurant A, we are really happy, we have two. 
If we go to a restaurant B, we discuss, we enjoy each other company, but we just have one, the food is not so great. If we don't meet, we assist. Okay? And cooperation here means that the payoffs are the same. You see, we both have two, we both have one, or we both have zero. Well, then we, have, we can have situations that are a little more complicated, like uh, what is called stack hunting. So I, I, I like to change a little bit this. Uh, you see, this is really a very old game. You see, it's 200 years older than game theory, because it's in, uh, in Rousseau. It says to be a cost of the So uh, if, if, if you look uh, in the book there, it says, well, I don't have it in modern time. I don't think that Rousseau knew about my book or whatever. So we have two cavemen, Roland and me, and we want to chase a mammoth. So the mammoth is a big animal, so we have to be together to get the mammoth. So if we get the mammoth, we are really happy because we have to eat for 10 days. And so we don't even go to the restaurant before. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, what may happen? Well, it may happen that, you see, maybe Rolando goes to hunt the mammoth and uh, I'm really bad that this ABT has also show up. So what happens? The mammoth is a big animal and starts chasing Rolando. Okay. And uh, so in this case, so I am the one, uh, now we have to decide about something, so suppose, uh, yes, suppose I am the one who does this. So I defect and Rolando goes to chase the mammoth. So before we are getting 10 in this case, if I defect uh, to Rolando gets zero. You see, because the mammoth is chasing him. While well, I stay comfortably somewhere there, so I don't get all the meat. I could get by hunting the mammoth, but still I am eating what we left in the cave, and I get eight. Okay? You see, so here there is an asymmetry that was not here. You see, there is a case in which we have different payoffs. Or, uh, now Rolando has understood that I am a totally unreliable person, so he too, he too stays in the cave, but now we have to share our provisions, so suppose that we get seven. So you see, this is a game, it's still a game in which we have a common interest that is hunting the mammoth. But if we deviate from it, our interests are widely apart. No? Suppose that one defects and the other chases the mammoth, the one that has defected gets A, stays in the cave, the one that is chasing the mammoth gets B. Is here to everybody in the story? And what is interesting, and you see, most people, when they, they put this example, I think they are quoting from somebody who quoted or quoted or quoted, and they forget adding that there is an interesting passage after it, because it says, well, you see, you converge to this, and of course, in theory, say, no, you don't, uh, you can cut seven, and but then it also adds, if you are able to communicate. So, here it says, well, in order to be there, you see, it is questionable that you are not here, that you, 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 you see, if you don't trust each other, you can be here, okay? But if you communicate, it seems quite obvious that you're here. So the general type of ideas I have is to take this type of games. So suppose we have these situations. So these are on the action level. But before taking some action on this, we can communicate. Study this. And in a sense, I want to do the reverse of what has been done by Rousseau and the, all the political things, that is, the focus is not so much on the fact that we communicate in order to get results, but what are the rules that communication has to use in order to have good results. So I give you a very simple example. Suppose that we can communicate in the sense that people can emit noise. Okay? But uh, uh, as we said yesterday, for those who are here, Suppose that I, I speak only Italian and uh, uh, Roland speaks only German. So you see, we can speak as well, and we don't understand really not even the word of this. So you see, the fact that we communicate is totally valid. Okay? So we must be able to understand what the other one means. And this is not very easy in, uh, in the theory because uh, it, it is very hard to model what meaning is. This is what you say it is. You see, it's not that I say, if I promise to do A, then I am bound to do A. You see? And that's why even if I were bound, nothing would change. It means simply that instead of playing here, we are playing there. Okay. So my problem was to say that, uh, say, the rule of languages, of language, semantic and, and maybe pragmatic, are partly bound. No. 
which, if you think of it, is obvious. That is, suppose uh, that I see a dog uh, that is trying to hunt Rolando, I say, I say, well, the dog. So this is the first thing that comes to my mind. Okay? So the idea is that, that to say, well, if I can send messages, these messages are a little bit linked to the state of the world, in case they are statements, or they are linked to my actions, if they are promises or uh, other type of speech acts. You could uh, even have more complicated things, that is a question. You see, I beg you to do, I could ask somebody and this. And uh, there are cases in which this, I would say, they are validated. So if I say the truth, you say, say, what is that? That is a bottle. Okay. Or if I say, can you please pass, but they can also be validated by an action. So you say, can you please pass me the salt? And Rolando passes me the salt. Or, or, or I can say, what is the time? And this is an interesting thing. It is, uh, I can also say, do you know what is the time? So yes, is a good answer. We even say that the body laughs, and it's the usual joke. So the wonderful thing in pragmatics and realize is that you can give so many jokes. I think 90% of the jokes that people say are. Sorry? <laughs> no, no, I can't stop. <laughs> if you have a question, please interrupt me. I'm here. Anyway, so, uh, so the idea is that you should have it, but if this, uh, say, the message or whatever is not validated, so for instance, if I say I will show up tomorrow at 5 and I don't, I pay a little cost for it. Okay? So this number, this little cost, should be considered as smaller than everything else that you see here. You see, it's a little cost for, and it's not even a cost for lying, say, in the moral sense. So it's not that I feel guilty for it. It's simply that it's easier for me to say what the state of affairs that I am observing. Uh, just to say, suppose that somebody is, uh, there is a blind person that is trying to cross the road. And uh, there are no signals, acoustic signals, so he asks me, is, it, is the light green or red? You say, if, if it is red, and if I say green, please go, no problem with this. So this is not a small cost. You see, I should have a high, if I am see, never least decent person, I should have a high cost in line. No, this, this, so it, it is not this is what I meant. This is not the cost that is related to the consequence of the action. Is, say, the cost that I have, if I ask you, what is the color of this chalk? You tend to say white. If I say, well, yes, does it cost you anything to say that it is black? You say, well, unless other people look at me or think that, you see, if it has no consequences at all, you also say black. You see, it's a very, very small preference to what telling the truth. When nothing else changes. Okay, so this is more or less the general framework. And what I claim is that exactly the way in which you formulate these preferences and the order of them, these weak preferences, is what pragmatics or semantics are. I, 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 I begin with an example. And, uh, well, before doing an example, I still I have to say something say, very technical, maybe, for, for people who gain theory in this, because a problem with this is that then you find equilibria, Nash equilibria, whatever, I mean, solutions to the problem. To the, to, so you said everything, you say these are the codes, these are the things, so what people do. You have many possible solutions, this is not wrong, that there are many possible way or ways of which you can express uh, something. Uh, but uh, what you do gain theory is that first, some of the solutions are totally nonsensical. No? This is a typical problem in game theory, so you have to select it to And how do you do them? So there are, I think at some point, so there is a concept of Nash equilibrium, but then at some point I wanted to have fun, I looked in the literature, and in half an hour I had a list of 30 different solution concepts. You see, games can, uh, solutions can be, Nash equilibrium can be perfect, can be proper, can be intuitive, can be uh, stable, uh, whatever it is, uh, can be absorbent, uh, whatever. Uh, somebody had uh, a definition called uh, this concept divine, very modestly. Uh, then, after two months, some people, after two months, the paper was published, some people realized that it was all nonsense. So, he had a new concept that was called divine two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then people got tired of finding the And, and, and you say, this is not a good way to get friends because when you say this, people get very upset. 
actually, not the one of divine, but I, I wrote something. Oh, yeah, I, I was explicit, but I don't think there was. And, and I, I got an email that was very, so he said, well, I think that this thing doesn't make too much sense to live. And he replied, well, I don't like at all your attitude, and I ask people in uh, this department to cancel you from the list of possible invited uh, speakers. So, well, <laughs> I was a little bit uh, very, very aggressive. Anyway, uh, the idea is that, my idea is that there is also another thing that uh, should come in the picture, that it is not only uh, all, all this Nash equilibrium and this thing, I am also stuck with, uh, with the technicalities. Eh? Uh, all, almost all this Nash equilibrium, these are based on things that are called rationality. Well, rationality is simply understood as being robust against perturbation. So you see, you are doing something, I reply in this way, fine. I should also do the best thing if you change a little bit your behavior. But sometimes people can change completely their, their behavior. And, and this is out uh, of the picture. So there is another way uh, of interpreting rationality that seems to be more combined. That, I mean, it's not saying rationality is some metaphysical thing based on mathematics or whatever. It's simply to say it is what is evolutionary stable. You see, if you have a behavior, well, you know, don't call it rational, call it plausible, call it smart, call it calm, whatever. That is, if you are in a population and you behave in such a way that you can have a lot of offspring or a lot of people that imitate you and you are successful in this, then this is a rational behavior. So, for instance, if uh, I am in a population in which, uh, and this is a typical example, in Sweden, in the 70s, it was uh, uh, more or less normal it was not normal, it was the, the, the rule that people draw, draw like uh, in, um, in England, on the left. Okay? But the cars were German cars, so uh, they had the wheel on the other side. So you see, it was a little bit uncomfortable if you had to take over something. I mean, Sweden in the 70s traffic was not so that big, but still it was not a good idea. So you can interpret it as a game of system. So you, can, you can have two rules, that is, either you, you, you go on, on the right or on the left. See? And, uh, well, because driving on the right would be good, but if you drive on the left, is a little bit uncomfortable. What you want to avoid is that somebody drives on the right and the other on the left. Okay? And, of course, if you are in Sweden, you are right there, and there is a population that they all drive on the left, your rational behavior is to keep on driving on the left. You see, it would be smarter if everybody drove on the left, but you see, given that context, you want to drive on the left. And there is no way you can get out of it. So this equilibrium is good in this sense. But now suppose that we change the game a little bit. So uh, suppose uh, that uh, instead of, you see, this happened only one, but then you say, well, suppose that we, you repeat this game many times, so it's not driving anymore. Suppose that I don't know, you are in some uh, television program, you see, and you have to do a very silly game, that is you have to press A or B. If both of us press A, we get 2, if both of us press B, we get 1. This. And by some reason, people have convinced me that the person that comes will start by playing B. Okay? But now the point is that we don't do it only once, but we do it a thousand of times. So what do I do? Well, Again, what I say intuitively, the rational behavior is not to press L, L, L thousand of times. I start by pressing right. He sees or she sees that I deviate from A. He knows that I am a rational person, uh, I know that she is a rational person, whatever, and I interpret it as a suggestion that this is a better thing. Okay. So to formalize this, uh, well, this has been done, it's something that is called evolutionary game theory, but here too, there are many, many. Uh, I mean, there are many, many good things, but also some misunderstanding. And uh, I will just give you an example, and then we go back to this. Suppose that we take the Lewis game now. Okay? So, suppose that we take the Lewis game, there are three states of the world. Okay. Suppose that I am able to draw to so this. I'm very hard. I, sorry, I exercise a lot during this day during some conference. <laughs> so this should not be a cat, but a leopard. 
Ik heb er ook bij, nog zoiets. Bij het verder. Oké, zo, het is niet dat we hebben een hele en het is niet dat we hebben dat er is een leilpaard dat is een coach. Second state of the world, there is a big fish, good to eat, and monkey love fish in the river. Okay? Third state of the world, always in the river, there is no I, I got some money from Lacoste. <laughs> but very little money. <laughs> okay. There is uh, this animal. Assume that it is a crocodile in that. And what are the actions that you can do is to climb the tree. Well I don't drag too much, no? So you can climb the tree, you can go to the river, and uh, you can run away from the river. Because some, some, some monkeys are having fun in the river and some others are near the river. So uh, there are, uh, say, uh, well, for each state of the world uh, there is an obviously good action, things to do. No? If there is a leopard, you, cl you climb on the tree. If there is a fish, you go to the river and then you go. And suppose that we have messages. For the moment, we suppose that there is no obvious link between the state of the world and the message. You see, the, the messages are sounds, blah, 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 blah. And uh, suppose that we have three agreements. Now here, and, and, and this was the content of US book and this, so the intuition is that evolution will should happen. That is, if I have three messages, I should use each of these messages for one state of the world, and then the man who listen to me should behave properly. Fine. And, and this is true, and everything, but then, again, if you try to apply blindly some, some mathematical concept to the I think maybe in theory it doesn't too much. Uh, you can have, and in fact, you have many papers that claim that uh, no, it is not so, that this evolution can also get stuck in uh, situations. Uh, and the situation in which evolution gets stuck here would be something like that. Okay, if you have the leopards, you say, say leopards, just to associate this to it, and people find the chain. If there is a fish or a crocodile, you shout crocodile for both of them, and people run away from the river. So in case there is a fish, they don't catch it. And uh, you, you say you also have a message that would be our candidate for fish, but but for some reason, if you say it, uh, all the monkeys climb the tree. Okay. And uh, okay, why should it be so? Why well, people say well? Suppose that climbing the tree is a sort of takes some effort, some energy. So suppose that you see the fish. You want to you don't say fish because the monkey will climb the tree. Okay? So they will do an effort and they, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just tell you the story. Uh, so if it is so, you don't say fish. But you say crocodile and people run away from the river. So you say it's the best thing you see. This is out of question. You, you have to choose between climbing or running away, and uh, you choose running away. Okay, and then if there is this, fish is not used. So I don't think fish it makes sense to climb the tree because in any case nobody will see. Yes, well, I mean, I think everybody will say that this is a silly thing to do. But it satisfies this concept of neutral evolutionary stability. So the first uh, contribution, and this is some work of a student of mine, this one, is to find a good concept of evolution stability that says that this is not the case. So such an equilibrium shouldn't appear, and you don't see it in nature, and it never happens. Why? Well, the reason is quite obvious. It is F is not sent, so, well, you say, upon F, you climb the tree, but you never heard it, so if there is another type of monkey that go to the river, it should be as good as this one, so you should be in this case, and then if you have enough monkeys to go to the river by saying this, when you are here, you, know, yes. you have this two-step process. Uh, it is a little longer than other because you have to do two steps to do it, but it is there. So the first, say, result that applies in general and, and this is to show that really, in cooperation games, evolution leads to efficiency. Now, let's enhance this, this model a little bit. 
It's supposed that we are some million years later, so we all ran away from leopards and crocodile, and we eat fish, so we become very smart. <coughs> and we are so smart that we have a language, and we are able to distinguish three words. Okay. And now, uh, so now the thing is different, because it's not that we have sounds. That is, when I say a word, it has some reference. Okay. So suppose, again, that we are in case A, S and uh, N. If we are, say, in the case in which nobody, suppose that now, since we are very civilized, so as somebody, how many uh, people, how many students came to me? So did students come to the class? And either no student come, some students came, or all the students came. Okay? Uh, and suppose that the message of this one, that is, uh, suppose the message of some student came, all students came, not all students came, not all came, uh, nobody came. Okay. Yes. So why do I write that like this? That is, I write them in this way because these are the messages that are true in this state. If all the students came, all the students came is correct, some of the students came is correct. If some come, some and not all is correct, and so on. So I have these messages here. And they assume that, again, there are appropriate actions to do for each of them. And that, uh, uh, but with respect to it, as I said, we have already a language that we assume now. So this is this small cost. That is, if some student came, came and they say no student came, I have to pay a little cost. So you see, maybe I, I want to do it with, we get some advantage by some other occasion. But in principle, I would try to avoid it. So now what happens, that is, what are the equilibria in this case? Well, here, so one of the results that I have is that in any case, whatever the equilibrium is, the material payoffs, so that is, the correspondence is always by check. Observe that we can have cases in which people are lying. So we can say, well, I can say, if all came, I can say nobody come, nobody. If some came, I can say all come, and if nobody comes, I can say whatever all came. Suppose I have uh, all uh, no uh, something. Suppose that I have only these three messages, so I don't have the negation in this thing. Okay? So well in a sense this is efficient because you see for each state of the world I use a message and I do the appropriate action. So from the material point of view this is good. If I add these little costs here, you see that nevertheless I have to pay some something for saying this, because I am compelled to lie all the time. But I have to, because you see, I would like to say all here instead of nobody. But I know that if I say all, this other one, by some reason, will understood some. So I don't want to do it. Okay, okay well, you say this is a little bit artificial, this thing. Well, the point, what is the point is that really we have many messages. We don't have only three. This works only because there are three messages. In this if we have more of them, the result that is quite intuitive, that is here, I have many options and I can move it. So again, we are in the case in which I say the right thing. Not only, but if I have a set of messages that are on a scale, as in scalar replication, you see one came, few came, uh, some came, almost all came, and this. Well, and if these are the messages, and then I have some other message that may be easy, unrelated or whatever, then I use the correspondence that you imagine. That is, that respect scalar implication. So I don't have to force scalar implication in this case. This is a, it's a natural consequence of the behavior of my agents. Yeah. Is one result. How many minutes? Minus 10? One, 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 one more minute. minute. OK. So uh, scalar in, one of the results here is that scalar in, scalar implication here is uh, say, the natural way to do that is I don't have to put further constraints on the language. Observe that there are other things, and also observe that here yeah, I can reverse it. This is the thing I, I would like to study. That is, you see, I have scalar indication in this sense, but I can, could also have it in this sense. That is, if nobody came, came I could say not all came. Here I could say uh, some came, and here uh, all came. You see, the situation is complicated. But now, there is the other type of implication, 
if they are in the future, whatever. And this is the case in which we still have three states of the world. Now suppose that the states of the world is I'm waiting for a friend to come for dinner. And I don't know when, when it comes, I have to put uh, the pasta down. It has to be real at that time. And then I ask my friend, my, my, my friend is called John. He has a red bike. But there are other red bikes. In the, I'm sure that it comes with a red bike. But other people have a red bike in town. So I asked my girlfriend, uh, has John arrived? And she answered, uh, there is a red bike down there. So I understand John. So here too, really, I have a situation that is exactly like this one. That is, here I have John and the red bike. Here I have not John, but there is the red bike. Somebody else has arrived. And here, not John and no red, red bike. So I don't know if I... You see, I, I, I could substitute, yes, it is quite, what is two or whatever. But uh, so formally and semantically, this equation is exactly equal to this one. But here, you know, the, the message here, uh, that I use here could be, well, I can say John, of course, but also uh, it's good. So it would be like to say some people came here. You see, just from the... Uh, so why uh, instead, why well, not, well, this is what, uh, yes, I, I say red and then. So why is the, um, that bad, say, and here good? Well, the point is the context. That is here, I assume that you have three actions that are appropriate. Here, really, what matters is not the bike, it's John. You see, if the bike is there, but if John is not there, whatever, it is in these two states, I wait. And here, I cook. Right? So the important thing is that job is job here. So this means that the, the message R here is irrelevant, that is distinguished between two states of the world which I don't care at all. So I have already uh, something that is given me by the national equilibrium and uh, the semantic that I had here already. But here I have to add, and it's not only in this case, also in the case in which we said before we have to agree to the restaurant, even if we don't say state of the world, I have to add a further maxim that would be the relevance maxim that says whenever I have many states that correspond to the same action, I should use, that it is better to use the message that has the largest extension here. So I don't want to be very precise on things that don't matter anymore. Right? And so that this is not, you see, I, this, okay, he did, here I have this and I have a consequence where I say if you take this maxim, you will state this. But in other cases, um, I don't introduce it to, um, to say that people are lazy. So it's not that you don't want to pay, you uh, don't want to make a long statement, anything like that. I'm done. Eh? Is, uh, <laughs> the fact is that if you don't have this maxim here, you can cook examples in which you don't even get the good payoffs. So you can go wrong uh, in, uh, in other cases. I just add, with this I conclude, suppose we have to, uh, we, we, we are chasing the mammoth and this. I tell to, well, I tell to Rolando, I promise I finish by 6, 4, D5, whatever. <laughs> and, but I say, well, if uh, I'm really, you know, if the third world uh, breaks up, I will take a little longer. Okay, well, now Rolando understands that probably, even without the third world, I will. So you see, what I've done, I have had a comment that is totally irrelevant, the third world uh, war, and uh, this has changed the priors of Rolando. So this is more or less the mechanism that has to be avoided. Okay? If you have this, you don't have continuity. So in a sense, the, this maxim is relevant because otherwise evolution cannot be efficient. So, <laughs> thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.